right, so let me introduce our keynote speaker and tell you a little bit about him. Um, growing up in a single parent home with a father that inspired and demonstrated perseverance and fairness, Marquis Ogden, Ogden Marcus Ogden learned how to define his values and set goals. Marcus attended Howard University from 1998 to 2002, where he played Division I football. He followed his dream and his brother Jonathan's footsteps and was drafted in the NFL in 2003. Marcus played in the NFL from 2003 to 2007 as an offensive lineman with the Titans, Bills, the Ravens, and the Jaguars. At age 27, he founded a construction company called Caden Premier Enterprises, a business that's grown rapidly in the last few years, and he lost, but he lost the business after bad business endeavor. At his lowest point, in, uh, at his lowest point, the NFL and lessons he learned from his father and coaches helped him restructure his life with hard work and determination. He became a motivational speaker, marketing leader, and the goal of helping others to succeed. Author of best-selling book, Sleepless Nights, the NFL, a family business. Please welcome our closing speaker, Marcus Ogden. Well, the highs, the highs and this is going to the lows of going bankrupt, which is everything that I own, my home, my cars. So my public speaking is really about telling you my stories and help give you those strategies to move forward, but also hopefully you learn from my stories so you don't go bankrupt or have the same problems that I did. My name is Marcus Ogden. I'm a former NFL athlete. I'm now a current best-selling author and a motivational speaker. I went to Howard University and I've been playing in the NFL for six years. I was raised by a single father, uh, Cheryl Philip Ogden. He raised me and my brother John Ogden, who's also an NFL football player. He's also in the Hall of Fame. Our dad, he said, athletics is always going to be short-lived. No matter when you stop playing football, you are going to become an ex-athlete. So education over athletics, number one. I was originally doing some football coaching in Raleigh a couple years ago. And I was also working as a janitor at an 825 an hour in the graveyard shift because I wasn't making enough money to support my family with football coaching. And I realized that it's not going to be my life. I'm going to start talking about my experiences, my success, my failures, to help others avoid my mistakes. So about three and a half years ago, I decided to embark on becoming a public speaker to help people be successful where I failed. The lessons that I learned transcend into topics such as leadership. The foundation of any good business is great effective leadership. Leadership is this, the ability or the capacity to translate vision into reality. As a leader, you must be able to share your vision from your mind to your mouth to communicate for others to follow you. From playing in the NFL, I had a big team-oriented experience, team bonding. When I'm in public speaking, talking to corporations like J.P. Morgan or Home Depot, I then will challenge the audience with a burning question or a problem. And then I relieve that problem with some strategies for success that I use in my personal life. I believe if people are passionate and excited about going to work, you're going to have a much more exciting corporate environment and you have a better America overall. I'm just trying to help people with my story, whatever road they're trying to travel on, to help them be successful in their own right. Good morning. Good morning. How is everybody doing today? My name is Marcus Ogden, former NFL athlete. I'm the younger brother of Jonathan Ogden, Hall of Fame football player. The Eagles, really? Really? Philadelphia? I mean, come on, man. But my good friend and former teammate Jason Peters is a star tackle for you guys, so I'll give you a little bit of credit. Just a little bit, not much. Okay? So I'm here to talk to you today about my story. Okay? I am not an expert. I am not a researcher. I'm a personality keynote speaker. I'm going to tell you my story, and it's going to really be geared around leadership, some things that when I did things correctly, I thrived, and in my late 20s, built an eight-figure business when everybody thought I was only a good as a good football player. Then when I did things wrong with leadership, I ended up almost homeless five years ago, one week away. 
It's a real, authentic story, and then I'm gonna give you some strategies that I believe you can implement into your daily lives yourself to help you achieve greatness, to help your business, and help your people at AXA thrive. So that's what I'm doing here today. Leadership is the art of getting people to do what you want done because they want to do it. General Dwight D. Eisenhower, when you are a leader, when you lead by action, when you're very humble, when you serve your staff, you talk about being very, someone that's always gonna give their best effort. People are going to respond to that so much better. They're gonna be much more passionate, much more energetic, and much more focused when you are a leader that leads by example and they see you doing the actions yourself. If you're someone that's yelling at people, talking down to them, trying to dictate to them what to do, they're gonna have pushback. When you have pushback, you're gonna really be in a situation where you have that constant battle of, you talked about it earlier, the communication's not gonna flow very well. And effective communication is one of the big things that a corporate environment needs to thrive all day long. So General Dwight D. Eisenhower, former general, former U.S. president, talks about this, and I love this quote because when I start doing things like this in my new business as a keynote speaker, a coach, I really have had a lot of success. So I truly believe doing this will really help you in your day-to-day -day business. Now, this guy right here, you're all gonna know, some of you may like, some of you may not like, I'm a little bit biased, I like him as a person, okay? But as a coach, not really my favorite guy because I always lost to him every single time. Played him five times my NFL career, lost all five, okay? In 1996, sorry, 1995, he was let go from the Browns, okay? Two years later, he ends up going to New England. Robert Kraft took a gamble on him because he really was known as a coach who didn't do well in Cleveland. But what he told Mr. Kraft was, let me do this my way. Give me the leadership ability to show you I can deliver what you're asking. Just give me the opportunity to lead you, the Patriots, with the way I think things should be done. And if you do this, I can hopefully give you a great product. And we all know the rest of history. Third winningest coach of all time, okay? I remember being around him when he does spoke at seminars. When I was drafted, he was on our panel. These are some leadership things that he talked about that he does with his brand because the NFL is a business. It's a great sport. I love playing it, but it's straight a business. You have to produce in order to be effective, okay? So he talked about his three leadership lessons. Number one, practice your craft daily. Whatever you want to do, you have to practice that craft so it becomes second nature. You have to do it over and over again so it becomes a, your part of life. It becomes how you are. You all, and you said this earlier, Jim, correct? You said that, he said this earlier, I so agree. Everyone in this room is a great leader. You would not be here if you were not. I'm just gonna tell you my story and hopefully you become even better leaders to help yourself, your team, and AXA. But you're already a good leader by a fact you're in this room. You are 100% correct, Jim, and I really appreciate you saying that. So again, like Belichick said, practice your craft daily, okay? Number two, be accountable to those that you serve. When you are a true leader, you don't talk down to your staff, you serve them with a cause that is greater than yourself. So you have to be willing to serve those people that work with you. Because if you serve them and they feel appreciated, they'll go through a brick wall for you every single time. So it's very much, Bill always talked about, he always serves his players and he always serves his coaching staff. Why do you think Josh Daniels didn't take the job in Indianapolis? Well, maybe Indianapolis is not very good, but still, he ended up believing in Bill Belichick and he wanted to stay because he understood the culture that has been set by Bill Belichick. Okay, number three, always be early. 
Bill Belichick had a saying, uh, Jack Del Rio, every coach I ever played for the NFL, if you're on time, you're late. You're on time, you're late. Because to them, you have to be there early to show respect that you really appreciate the opportunity to be in the room, to be with that person, to be with that staff, to be with that leader, to lead that team. So being early and staying late shows a lot of respect to your staff, to your brand, and to yourself, okay? The NFL Acts Advisors, what do they both want? They want great leadership. It is easy to find people who can take orders and follow direction. It is hard to find people who can create a vision and create a blueprint for people to follow. This is why Tom Brady, who's 41 years old, is still playing with the Patriots. Is his arm strength the same? Absolutely not. Can he move anymore? Not really. But he's really good at the vision. He's really good at getting those young players that you never heard of to catch touchdowns, to be on defense. It's the same thing with you all. You guys are the leaders that have to create the vision for the younger generation. Tim just said it. You all have to lead and mentor that younger generation. Ladies and gentlemen, I used to work at Merrill Lynch not that long ago, about five years ago. I, I'm just being very honest. The culture there was not very good. People didn't help. They didn't mentor. They didn't give you advice. It was very cutthroat. It was like, I need help. They would shut the door on you. They wouldn't even, I'm, I was there for like, for the first, my first couple of days, literally I had a, one of my former NFL teammates who played for the Jaguars, he worked there. And he, I could talk to him because I knew him. Besides him, nobody would talk to me. I got no advice. I got no guidance. I got no mentorship. I got no leadership from anybody. And I struggled. And then I got let go because I just couldn't catch on. I had no one to teach me and give me some advice about the culture of their brand. So you all have an amazing culture. From having a conversation with you Wednesday night about just you didn't know me, just sitting there having a great conversation, to the way Tavar helped me making sure I was taken care of. Christine, I came down and said, hey, I have a problem. Oh, we'll take care of it right away. Like, right away. Like, there was no even discussion. I'm like, really? This is phenomenal. And no wonder you guys are a Fortune 25 brand. Because the people that are in this room, they reflect the acts of brand. They reflect the culture. You all are the trendsetters. You are the trendsetters. When you all create the vision, people are going to follow you. Plain and simple. Because you all care about not just yourself, you care about your people. And when you care about your people, you are destined to be great every single time. That's not even a question about it. Okay, so I'm gonna now tell you my personal story, okay? A little bit of leadership, things like that. So the kid in the middle is me. You could tell us the 1990s, I have a part in my hair, okay? That's my father on the left, who by the way stands at six foot four. I'm sorry, stood, he passed away at six foot four. That's my baby brother, Jonathan who was six foot nine, 350 pounds in the eighth grade. Okay? True story. I remember this. The Washington Redskins heard about, who's this Ogden kid? There's no way he's six nine. Jim Lachey, my old line coach, Fred Dean, uh, you know, uh, Jeff Bostick, all these guys, they said, we're gonna come up to St. Albans, we're gonna prove you wrong, okay? Literally. My father told me, Marcus, they got off the, out of the car, they all walked up to my brother and said, oh my God, this kid is 16 and he's to he towered over every single one of them. And you know what? Our father raised us as a single dad. He worked in the banking industry for 30 years. He was the first African American to have a bank manager position with his company. And he taught his boys about three things. Respect yourself, respect women, and get an education. He said, if you all play football, great. But at the end of the day, if you don't respect yourself, you don't respect women, and you don't get an education, we're going to have problems. 
And my dad was 6'4", about 450 when he was in his early days, so you didn't want to mess around with that guy, okay? <laughs> my brother got 132 of 132 Division I scholarship offers. <laughs> okay? Uh, every, I, re I remember, guys, Bobby Bowden was in my home, okay? Lou Holtz came to our house, Terry Donahue, George Welsh, and Steve Spurrier. Every single one of them at the table, Mr. Ogden, what do you need? Need a car? Need a house? Need, what do you need? Like, let us know. And my dad, remember, told him, he sat us both down and said, you know what, guys? All that doesn't impress me. I want a leader who's going to lead my son to have a good career in school and after football. And you know who he chose? Terry Donahue and the UCLA Bruins. Because Terry said, Mr. Ogden, I'm not going to offer you anything. If you want your son to be with someone who's going to give him good leadership guidance and help him be a man and a person that respects himself, I want him to come to my school. That sold my dad. So my brother went off, got a scholarship, and played it in the NFL. Now me, how many Division I offers did I get? Zero. <laughs> None. I, got, I was six foot three when I left high school. I grew to six foot five and a half. Okay, I got one offer to college. Just one, Howard University, where my dad went to school, carried on the legacy. You talk about you know, fathers and sons and legacies, went to where my dad went to school. And what did I learn? It only takes one opportunity to reach success. I never wanted to be an NFL athlete. I wanted to work in downtown, and I'm sorry to say this, I wanted to work for Merrill Lynch while I was in college. But once I got there and realized what it was, I'm just going to work out anyway. But still, I wanted to be a financial planner. That was my dream. Because my father was a financial planner all of his life. But I was very fortunate. I worked hard. I developed great leadership skills. In 2003, the NFL draft came calling. I remember I got to talk to the teams, things like that. And they all said, Marcus, you're coming from a school where we know you are a great leader. If you bring that leadership to the NFL, you will be fine. Because that is what we are missing right now, is more players who can lead on the field, in the locker room, in the community, and that was what was important to them. Okay? So in 2003, I was drafted. I was drafted by this guy right here, Jack Del Rio. Now, you guys see the, the, the shoes and the, and, the, and the tucked in shirt into the polo and the visor, and you see the old Jack smile, and he's like, oh, he's a good looking guy. He likes, to, he likes to smile on the football field. By far, one of the best coaches I ever played for, but one of the toughest. Jack took nothing from us, because this was his first job as an NFL head coach ever. So he told us, if you want to be on my football team, show great leadership, be on time. But what he also told us is that in order to succeed on, in football and in life, you have to be your own CEO. You have to be the one that decides what you're going to do for this football team. You're the one that's going to have to decide if you want to actually increase your value or decrease it. I can't do that for you. I can only give you the opportunity to play football, but are you going to do things extra? Are you going to go above and beyond? Are you going to do those things? So I took what Jack said, and it really helped me in my later life to develop my business and develop myself off the football field. I played in the NFL for six years, had a great time, met some great people, played against some great opponents, learned a lot of great lessons. I ended up struggling, though, like a lot of people do in life with transition. I struggled with what am I good at other than football? I had to figure out that. I was talking to the, I'm sorry, what's your name, sir, right here? What's your name right here? I was talking to George earlier about, oh, how do you sometimes focus on different things when you're a leader, you have a lot of things coming at you? I told him, focus on what your strengths are. What you are not strong at, hire someone to come onto the team to help you in those areas to really help the company flourish. A great leader is going to understand they cannot do everything on their own. You have to have a staff that you have developed to help you to help the brand. Because if you try to do everything by yourself, something's going to get missed all day. 
So I finally figured out what I was good at with marketing, with people, and in my late 20s, I started this construction company called Caden Premier Enterprises. I built it off great leadership. I built it off a winning attitude. I focused on what I was good at. I hired the right people. I went from zero dollars to an eight-figure business in less than five years. In my late 20s, I sat down with people that were from Johns Hopkins Hospital, their president and CEO, major corporations, Whiting Turner, Turner, all these big juggernauts that do all this work. I was at the table with them doing business because I had really worked hard and had great skills to be a good leader. But the problem was just what happened to so many people, complacency is the cancer of a true leader reaching optimal success. When I got to the top, ladies and gentlemen, I got lazy, I got arrogant, I got complacent. I thought I knew everything. You couldn't tell me anything. You couldn't communicate with me. If it wasn't good, I didn't want to hear it. I was a really horrible, bad, ineffective leader. And where did that lead me to? It led me to bankruptcy. In 2013, I lost everything I owned. My home, my cars, my credit, my family, my friends. All because I didn't sit back I didn't listen to people, and I was a horrible person as a leader to my staff. Think about it. You all are the CEO of your own area. You are the leader. You are the trendsetter. Don't you get things done more when you talk to people and communicate with them and not talk down to at them? Think, just think about it. I'm letting you know right now, I'm being very honest and authentic, I was at the top and I got to the bottom because I just did not maintain that positive culture. Steve Jobs says when he was alive, his job at Apple as a CEO was to create a safe environment for people to express their thoughts and opinions. If you can't do that as a leader, eventually you're gonna have mutiny. Eventually it's just gonna catch up with you. So I was bankrupt. 2013, I was one week away from being homeless. One week. What did I do? I started coaching football. I enjoyed it, but it wasn't enough. Okay, I was fired for, oh, let me go back. I was actually let go from two jobs in a week. Then I was basically became a football coach. But because I was not making enough money to be a football coach, you know what I did? Personal growth, personal development, I was this. Janitor. I made 8.25 an hour on the graveyard shift, taking out trash, vacuuming floors, scrubbing baseboards, having people say, hey guy, come take this trash out. Hey Marcus, you know, do this, do that. You know what I learned? It's, I, looking back on now reflecting, I grew as a person so much because it showed me that no matter what, I'm not too big to support and feed my family. I don't care what anybody calls me. You can call me boy, janitor, take this out. You know what? It was the only job I could get at the time. So when you have somebody that's willing to tell you the truth that they were at the bottom of the bottom, that the leadership got them to the top and then took them right down to the bottom, that is personal growth in my personal and professional life. I'm not perfect, but I'm trying to now explain to you all, when you all maintain a great leadership position and you keep people in that, in that mindset, that championship mindset we talked about, George, you are destined to have a great brand, okay? So what happens? In 2013, I call it my spoiled milk moment. Someone's spoiled milk got on my bare skin, taking out the trash at 3 a.m. Went out to the curb, put my head in my hands, started to cry, said, Marcus, what happened to you? You have a degree in finance. You play in the NFL. You built a business. What happened to yourself? You're feeling sorry for yourself. And a true leader is not going to do that. You're going to stop the pity party. You're gonna stop feeling like the world you know, you know, kicks you in the face. You're gonna get your act together. You're gonna get off the couch. And you're gonna to try to do something out of your comfort zone. You're gonna to try to stretch yourself. I say, you know what, let's become a keynote speaker. 
Let's help educate others with your story. And you know what happened? For the first two and a half years, ladies and gentlemen, not one paid job. Not one. Okay? When, what happened? I had to find something to help build credibility. As a true leader, people are going to follow you when they see the actions that you are doing. I had no action. I was all talk. That's all I was. I was a bunch of hot air. So what did I do? I decided to go ahead and write my best-selling book, Sleepless Nights. I decided to get myself to the point where people could read about my story. They could see what I've been through. They could read the things that I've struggled with to help me get myself where I want to be. Okay? So that became a bestseller. And then I started to pound the pavement some more, pound the pavement some more. I got some jobs, some jobs. And then eventually, I ended up speaking for Home Depot at their national conference in Atlanta. That job, on the, on the topic of leadership, talked to a thousand of their leaders from across the country, Canada and Mexico, about how to be an effective leader. What did I learn? I learned that leadership is the foundation of any good brand. It could be football, it could be speaking, it could be financial planning, it could be insurance, it doesn't matter. People are going to follow true leadership. If you show it and you breathe it and that's your culture, they're going to follow. If you talk it and you're just a bunch of talk and you don't show the action, they're going to see right through you. So it's vital that you preach and believe and breathe leadership into your team because they're looking, from, they're looking for it from you. Believe it or not, they want, they need it because they would not be where they are if you weren't leading them to greatness. So the better you are as a leader, the more effective you are, the better your organization is going to be. So this is my snapshot of a hardworking janitor who had got to the bottom because he lost his leadership skills, to a guy who decided to work his butt off and get himself back in motion, became a best-selling author, to a guy who now is a national keynote speaker, traveling the country and doing what he likes to do, talking to organizations like AXA about leadership, and is really enjoying the people that I meet and interacting with. So here's my challenge to you in the room, okay? So now I'm going to talk about some actionable steps that I have done in my construction company in the beginning and what I'm doing today that I feel could help you in your life, okay? Are you willing to elevate yourself and access advisors? Like Jim said, you are already a great leader. You're already a great leader. Can you elevate to become an even better leader? Can you leave a legacy for yourself, for your family, and for your brand? Like he said, I have been in the financial planning business. I got my degree in that. I've been around the Merrill Lynch's, the Bank of America people. I've been around people who hate the culture, who hate what they do every day they go to work because nobody at work is trying to mentor or help them. AXA is so different. You all care about your team. You care about your clients. So can you elevate to an even higher level to get more production, to make more money, to help your clients more, to serve more people? Can you do that? Can you do it? And again, I know you can, but I'm going to give you some steps that I feel could help you that I know have helped me in my life. Okay? Leadership habits that cultivate a healthy and profitable work environment. Number one, create the why. What, what is the vision of your people? Have a meeting with your team when you get back. Sit down, create the why. Why are we here? What are we trying to accomplish? What is our goals? What is our vision? Create that why. So many leaders forget to actually write their stuff down. When it's in your mind, it's just a thought. When it's on paper, it's an actual vision. People respond better when they see something written out. They just do. Because when they see it, it holds them more accountable to achieving it. So again, create the why. Number two, communicate effectively. Someone talked about earlier that, you know, if you see a problem on the horizon, start communicating now to stop that from happening. And that is so true. 
Effective communication is the backbone of any successful brand. Because if people are not talking to you or not dialoguing with you, you really don't know what's going on in their mind. So you have to have that effective communication between you, your team, your clients, to help create and sustain that healthy, profitable environment. Okay, number three, you have to build trust. Trust comes from three things. Competency, reliability, and having each other's back. Competency, can you actually do the job you say you can do? Are you competent in that fact, which all of you are? Reliability, can you get the job done in the time frame that it needs to be done? That's a big one. That's where a lot of people struggle. They're competent, but they don't get the job done in the time frame that's necessary. It could be a job that's due Friday at noon, they get to you Friday at two o'clock. Well, I needed it two hours ago. That is the real big difference I have seen in companies that are at the top and the ones that are struggling. They are not reliable to their clients or their team is not reliable to each other and they don't get those things done in the time frame that it has to be done. And then the third thing is having each other's back. You talked about it, George, mentorship, advice, and open door policy. When people feel that you actually can build that trust and you have each other's back, good things are, gonna, are going to happen all day, all, all day long, okay? It's the same thing in football, that team environment. When people feel a part of a team, they really wanna go ahead and push for greatness, okay? And the fourth one is create a psychologically safe environment. Short story, I ran my, pump, my company, Caden, we were at the top, of the, uh, the top of the hill. I remember I just got approved for an extra line of credit from my bank. My senior estimator said, Marcus, we're in trouble. I said, what do you mean, Colin? We're spending too much money on this one job, okay? We are not servicing our clients and our other jobs. I said, Colin, don't worry about that. We just got a line of credit. You're wrong. And he said, Marcus, give me five minutes. I said, no, Colin, it's Friday. Go home, see your family. I, you don't know what you're talking about. Please just go home and enjoy the weekend. Well, he came back on Monday, had me his resignation papers. And two weeks later, he had a new job. Six months later, my door shut. Here is somebody that tried to tell me, Marcus, you're on the way to catastrophe. But because I was so arrogant, I was so pompous, I was so immature, I didn't even give him a chance to explain himself. I didn't even give him a chance. This is a guy who worked with me for five, for four and a half years. And it, I just didn't even give him a chance to tell me. And he said, Marcus, I, just, I, can't, I can't be here. I said, I just, I, if I can't communicate with you my thoughts to help you, and you don't even wanna to listen to me, I'm gonna go somewhere else. Ladies and gentlemen, your team will leave you if you don't allow them to share their thoughts in, an, in a manner that's respectful, that you can have an open dialogue. People are human and businesses are driven by human capital. I don't care how much of a great person you are as far as a leader, this, that, or the other. If you don't have any human capital that drives the business, you're not gonna be successful. So again, it's vital as a leader that you let people on your team to express their thoughts to you in a manner that's good for everybody to create that vision that everybody can be successful. So that was the big one that cost me everything because I didn't take two minutes to listen to a guy that knew what he was talking about, but because I was so arrogant, such a bad leader, I never gave him the opportunity. So don't be like me, be very conscientious, be very respectful and listen to your key employees and let them express themselves so everybody has a chance to be successful. That's so vital, okay? My three-step leadership action plan, okay? Number one, okay? You have, to create, you have to have a championship mindset. One of my good friends and my former head coach of the Buffalo Bills and of the Tennessee Titans, Mike Malarkey, had a saying. When the greatest fear we have to overcome is the fear we put into our own minds. He said, when fear comes into your mind and stays for a long period of time, you become average. 
People who are champions, who people have a great elite mindset, when fear comes in, it comes in and goes out. They focus on the vision, not the fear. Fear is part of life, but you don't have to let it basically engulf you because you're just not focusing on the right things. So to have a championship mindset, you have to focus on the task at hand. That's key. Number two is you have to have a clear vision. Everybody in your office has to know what is the vision, the direction of the office. Where are we going? What are some KPIs? What are, I mean, what are some time frames? You know, and how long? You know, how much revenue are we going to make? How many clients are we going to have? Set those KPIs. Make it real. They have to see it. If they don't see it, they aren't going to be able to follow it. So set that clear vision. And this is the one that a lot of leaders struggle with, and I coach people on this all the time. Take immediate action. It's imperative that as a leader that you do not procrastinate. Procrastination is slow death. Because you're caught in limbo. Do I do this? Do I not? Should I make this move? Should I not? At the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, if you make a mistake, own it, fix it, move on. But if you don't take action, if you don't even try to make a move towards something, you're sitting in limbo. When you're sitting in limbo, access not going to thrive, you're not going to thrive, your team's not going to thrive, you're going to be in that state of just limbo. Nobody does well in that space. So again, number one, have a championship mindset, set a clear vision, take immediate action to be a great leader and be successful. Leadership acronyms. Okay, number one, no, next opportunity. When you are in business, especially sales, you're not gonna always get the sale. When I worked as a, lead, as a speaker, it took me 30 months to get my first paid job. I never gave up. If you hear the word no, if it happens to come across, you're gonna hear it. Say, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it and move on. People that dwell on the negative, they stay in that negative mindset. As a leader, when you have a negative mindset, it becomes toxic. Your team is going to pick up off your energy. If it's positive, they're going to do well. If it's negative, they're going to, they're going to feed right off your negativity. So if you hear the word no, do not get discouraged. Say, how can I do better? And go attack another potential client. Move forward. Do not dwell on the negative, because if you do that, you start hearing more no's, more no's, which becomes a big problem for you to be successful and to reach your goals for AXA, okay? Number two, fail. First attempt in learning. We all make mistakes. Learn from them. Learn from them. When I was a leadership person with Caden, I made a bad mistake to listen to my, to my employees. Now, for my business now, when my team has suggestions, has different thought processes, I listen, and I really listen well. Because I'm not going to go back to making that same mistake twice. So it's that first attempt to learn. If you make a mistake, learn from it so you do not dwell on the negative. Okay? When? Welcome your internal network. You all have a great culture where you all are about the team. Keep that culture. That is why you all are such a great brand and you're so successful because you have that internal network policy where you help each other. Old Guard, AXA, communication, you guys are all about that effective communication and that open door policy. And that's why you guys are number 25 and other companies are like 61, 104 because you all have identified the culture of having that open door policy, okay? Next one, winners optimize research and knowledge. Google, the internet, talking to people, your clients, your coworkers, your partners, you have information at your availability to be successful. Utilize every single thing that you have at your disposal to reach your optimal goal. That is critical. There's so much access to information. You can be successful with technology. You can reach any goal that you need to achieve. 
Okay? And the last one, team. T is for teachable. If you think you know it all, you've lost. Trust me, I thought I knew it all with Caden, and I lost big. Okay? So be teachable. E, be engaged. People can tell when you're a leader who doesn't want to be there. So be engaged with your conversation, with your interaction. Let your staff know you appreciate them. Say these two words, thank you. So many people don't do that. Those are the little things that can help you thrive as a leader to become an even better leader, okay? A, adaptable. When times change, you change. Millennials are coming in. Learn how to adapt to what they want to hear. Learn how to have speakers come in, different programs, processes. Try to connect more with your people that are, you're working, that are working for you to help you have a better profitable business and a better profitable office. And then M is motivated. If you don't want to be the best, then why do you even bother to even start? You have to be motivated and inspired to be the best. If you don't want to be the best at what you're doing, you're not doing the right job. So again, teachable, engaged, adaptable, motivated, okay? This is one of my favorite quotes that Jack said. And I'm, I'm really, I'm, it's really, I'm really sad for Coach Del Rio not to be coaching anymore in the NFL because he's such a great person. Players coach, great person, great business mind, great family man. But he told me this, in order to succeed, you have to be your own CEO. And Jack is a personal friend. He drafted me. I've thanked him every time I've seen him. He was a great player, but he really cared about his players and his coaches. This is why Del Rio, to me, is such a good person and a great leader, because he truly gave his all to his team, to his city, and to his staff. And that's why I'm sorry he's no longer in the NFL. But again, this has stuck with me since I was uh, out of the NFL and my whole career. So again, it could be very helpful for you guys in your business. So I'm just gonna sit close with this. Every single day, you have to earn your spot in life. So many people get complacent when they reach success and they take their foot off the gas. And I'm living proof that when I did that, things got really bad. You look at people in life who are successful, like Damon John, Mark Cuban, you know, all these guys, you know, that continue to press forward, you know, they, every single day, they give optimal energy and passion into what they do. Every single day. I'm here to tell you, in order to be a great leader, it's, it's really important that you just set the example by the actions that you do, that you are accountable to those that you serve, and that you take immediate action towards reaching your goal. But I'll, the most important thing that you have to do as a leader, though, is create the vision for your staff and your team to follow. If there's no vision, if there's no blueprint, if there's nothing they can look at as tangible of what they should be doing on a daily basis to achieve that vision, you are never going to reach the success that you want because people are never going to really understand what is the optimal end result that you're looking for. That's extremely critical. So again, every single day, every single play, earn your spot in life. Thank you.
And so this is the question I've always wanted to ask a guy your size. What is it like to be 6'6", 375 pounds? Was it 160 pounds by now? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> so we had a little conversation about that. Marcus, that was great. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.